so today we have the iFlight Success Metal version. Uh, this is the deluxe. There's two of these, and this is the one that's been tested today. So we're going to go over some of its specs. Also, its tests on a 4S, and the 6S will be upcoming next week for all of the ESCs. I've been working on that, and you guys will see that very soon. So let's take a closer look here. So there's two versions. One is the deluxe and one I think they're calling it the acro or something. The deluxe version comes with the heatsink on the fats. These are much more expensive uh, fats here than the, the other model. So theoretically, these should handle a lot more because obviously they can dissipate heat better. That is how fats work. The more heat they, they, they can dissipate with less resistance, the more current can go through without burning them. Now, as you can tell, filtration looks really minimal and it does show. It does translate into the... Uh, noise testing here. So if we take a closer look at the backside, now this gets really interesting now. First of all, I really wasn't feeling the whole um, modular thing, but when you really sit down and actually think about it, it's pretty cool. Let me explain why here. So first of all, these are two boards. So we have the main board with the FETs, the capacitors, and where the power is going to be going uh, from the battery to the motors. And we have this board, we could control, we could call it the control logic or the control circuit, which has the FET drivers and the microcontroller units that tell everything what to do. And as you can tell, there's like a little pin out here that you could solder onto. So I guess people are going to possibly Airbot and then having uh, Airbot would have their choice of, you know, boards. And then they give you which board you choose what board you want and then you create your own control circuits. So companies could have different board layouts so they can be unique and kind of stand out from the others. And they're all going basically to the same manufacturer. There's only a couple of manufacturers in China that do these things. Now, there's something in the beginning that I really didn't like about this. I mean, I think it has its pros and its cons. Now, we won't know until we actually uh, see its, over its lifespan what's going to happen with it. One thing, which is I'm sort of afraid of, the heat might desolder the main board. That could be a possible issue, depending. I'm not sure. This is just all theoretical. However, the advantage of such a layout here is you leave way more fatter traces for the power delivery inside the board. So you have one dedicated board with the copper just dedicated for all the power delivery. And then you have a separate board uh, for all the microcontroller unit and all the logic connections because these do cut out from, you know, the, the massive traces that are supposed to carry uh, the current. So this is kind of, I don't know, it's like a double-sided sword, you know, you can hit with it and you can also get hurt with it. So it's really interesting to see that they're going this route because um, it, it's really interesting, really. I, I'm really liking the whole modular form factor. I'm planning on probably creating one like that where you can just upgrade the fence by a modular board. It's really cool, actually, when you think about it. Now, in terms of real world use, I have no idea yet, but we'll get to see that very soon. Now, let's go into some of the specs. They're using the... Uh, Cortex M0 microcontroller unit, which is I think the F1s, the STM32 F1s here, not the F3s. They're using that FET driver that is found everywhere, which is something just normal now. And we also have one current sensor. So we have just one dedicated wire for the current. You're not going to be getting, you can't, you will be getting ESC telemetry, but within the ESC telemetry, there will be no current reading. There's going to be a, spe a specific dedicated wire for the current. So yeah, like I was mentioning, you only get one wi dedicated wire for the current. So we got the leftmost wire here, TX, which is telemetry from all of these. Then it goes to current, the second wire over, and then motors four, three, two, one, and then V in ground. V is going to be battery voltage. So this doesn't this doesn't have a five volt regulator on board. It might it has a three point three volt regulator here, uh, which you could probably route or steal some of the voltage from there. But I don't recommend it. Just take battery voltage. Hopefully you have your own PDB or your flight controller can take. Uh, battery voltage here. So keep that in mind if you're purchasing this. Now theoretically this thing should handle really well with the FETs on board from reading the data sheet on those. However, it does do it does have noise, but you know when you look at the package here, and if you're running this on a 6S, I truly highly recommend you add a low ESR capacitor. So here they do give us a 35 volt 220 microfarad Rubicon. I would have went for the 470, but maybe I don't know why they did this. You know, probably better. Uh, silicone wire, so connector for anything. A ready made XT60. You know, we don't get these actually a lot nowadays. Now, there's also something really interesting about this ESC. I know I'm rambling quite a lot about this. The price point for what this thing can offer is quite remarkable. It's a 6S, full blown, nice MOSFETs on here for under 60 bucks which is really, really hard to find. 50 amp 6S ESC for under 60 bucks is a very hard thing to find nowadays. And this thing's actually doing it. However, 
It is recommended to add the Loi Sarka Palace. Actually, you must add the Loi Sarka Palace there. It was pretty noisy, and we're going to get to see that in a bit. Now, there's something also pretty interesting here. Now, I was wondering why and how are they actually reading everything on a 6S into the FET driver? Because the FET driver takes a maximum of 25 volts uh, to sense each phase. So if it passes this phase, you know, it gets the voltage back. But these are only rated up maximum of 25 volts. So you shouldn't really go over 20 volts on the FET drivers. But then when you look closer on the 6S ESCs that are actually rated for 6S, they actually show that there is a, a voltage divider for that. So that drops the volts, kind of like a mini um, step down voltage regulator, but a very inefficient way to do it. But for this type of case, it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, you can see actually voltage dividers for each sense pin, which is pretty cool. Actually, I didn't, I didn't notice that before. I tried to look over an ESC that had a lot of issues on a 6S, which was the, uh, well, I don't know where I put it. It was the Eosheen HV. 6s so i was trying to um see if you know there's some something wrong with the overall schematic and i actually did find something but i don't know if it correlates why it wasn't really running great on 5s and a 6s which was the voltage dividers uh were actually the wrong values because when you for example the microcontroller units here on that one and this one they take maximum of 3.3 volts, okay? And they also need to sense, just like the FET driver, the FET driver is tolerant up to 20 volts, but the microcontroller units, 3.3 volts need to go to that pin. So what you do is that sensing has to go through a voltage divider and drop it down to 3.3 volt. However, when you calculate the, the voltage divider on the Eosheen Wizard HV's uh, ESC, when you put a 6S LiPo, that BB2 chip, which is rated for 3.3 volt, is coming, the, the, when it's sensing the phase voltage, it's getting back 5.2 volts. So it's probably shutting down or probably burning the BB2 chip pins. So that is something to take note of here. Here it looks like everything is well made and um, obviously Airbot and iFlight are really good companies. And um, enough talking, let's go jump to the testing and we'll take it from there, guys. Alright guys, so here are the results and it's not really looking great, but that doesn't mean it's a bad ESC, it just means it needs a low ESR capacitor or two. So let's get started. Now first here we have the throttle noise test. We have 10% throttle, 25, 50, 75, and 100% throttle. And here we have the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. Both of these are exactly the same, just one is the bottom ones are just the colored version so we can see where the voltage was at most of the time. Now if we take a closer look here, around 75% throttle, if you're not using a low ESR capacitor and on a 4S with a high KV motor, you're going to expect possible mid-throttle oscillations due to electrical noise. And this is a possibility. So if you do get that and you you tune the shit out of it and it's still oscillating then it could be due to electrical noise and again adding the Louis R capacitor would help now having great MOSFETs mean that you have a less probability of burning the ESC however you have a higher probability of burning something else if you have really really bad noise and as you can tell on a 4s we jumped up to 24 27.4 volts at a voltage spike so these are carrying a lot of current now, there is a theoretical test that I'm planning on doing. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it on BL Holly 32 ESCs, but which is the dead time, which is the time where both FETs are off for a phase. If we increase that, can, is there a way to actually make the noise less without even adding a low ESR capacitor? And that is what I'm currently doing with my open hardware ESC. That's why I'm building a development board to test these things out. So a low ESR capacitor is a must, and we'll see how this performs with a low ESR capacitor on a 6S next week. 
Now, let's bring in something else to compare. For example, let's bring in the Akon AK32. Uh, so here's the Akon. Let's actually bring the colored version. There we go. So here's the Akon. Now the Akon's up top. Now, as you can tell out of the box, you're getting a lot better filtration here. Now, I can only imagine they didn't have much space because of the FETs are so large on the iFlight. So, you know, if, if you're willing to add capacitors, then you should be fine in that perspective. Uh, you should come down to this level right here. So out of the box, it will need a low ESR capacitor. And it's really great that they actually provide one for you. And don't forget, this is the cheapest uh 60 amp 6s esc i don't know if it's 50 or 60 amp here i saved it 60 amp and i call it 50 amp i don't know but it's this is the cheapest below 60 bucks adding a louis R capacitor with those fets you should be good to go theoretically and um we'll see that again in the 6s shootout i haven't tested this one on a 6s if i did i would have told you something right now so overall out of the box it's not really um that clean in terms of filtration but it's using great mosfets and it is the cheapest uh 6s esc out there that's using proper components now we don't know how well the two board layout is really going to handle plus this increases weight so if you're looking for weight uh, decreasing weight then this would not be the ESC for you uh, I would not recommend this one because it's pretty damn heavy uh, since it has two boards it's pretty thick and the the the, the fets on there are really heavy as well so overall I think it's a really well priced ESC in terms of filtration it's right in front of you the data speaks for itself here uh, you could add low ESR capacitor and fix this up. But what I can tell you is that if anyone's used it, please let us know down in the comment section how it's going for you. Did you have noise without a low ESR capacitor? Did you directly install it with a low ESR capacitor when you got it? And um, let us know how your experience went because that's the whole idea here. So the community knows how well it is and what to expect from a product. And well, that's it, guys. I'll have a link to everything down below. And again, if you can check those out, those greatly support the channel. And also do have a Patreon if you could support me there. They enable me to keep doing the open hardware ESCs and as well as the open hardware F7, which is coming up within the next three weeks. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.